Hi, I'm Susan, and we're back at the Children's Corner, and today we're going to pipe a collar. We've already made our bias, we've already stitched our cording in the fold of the bias, and now, because this piping is going to go around the curve of the out outer edge of the collar, we're going to make some little clips, not all the way to the stitching, but almost. By the way, you should always mark your collars. Mark either the front or the back. You don't have to mark both. But um, mark your collar so that you know which is which. And that way when you go to put it on your garment, you'll put it on correctly. Okay, so by making those clips like this, it will go around the curve of the collar easier. And we're still going to be using the same foot that I used for the um, for making the piping. So if you didn't see that, it's a thirty, it's a five groove pin tuck foot. And normally you would be using that with a twin needle and making little tucks, but because the grooves are deep enough and just the right size for this piping, it really works well. So I'm going to lay the piping, and what you can do is you can have enough piping that you can um, lay the piping on the collar with a little bit of the piping sticking out beyond the collar and you'll clip that off later. It just makes it easier to start. And we're going to lower the presser foot with the cording and the groove that's the second one from the left. And I've already set my machine. You, you will need to move your needle position um, however many times it takes to get right beside the cording. And that just varies so much from machine to machine. It will depend on how many position options you have with your machine. Once you've got the cording in that groove, the piping in that groove, it pretty much guides itself. So you can watch that you have the raw edges of the piping and the raw edge of the collar together. You do have to go slow. There. So now we're going to clip the extra piping off at each end. Okay, now that we have it trimmed, we're going to put the collars together. And you're going to be sure that you have fronts to fronts. That lets you know that you also have your backs to your back. And now we're going to pin. Pin so that you're seeing your original stitching like when you just stitched your piping on. And the reason for that is you're going to be stitching with this side of the collar up. So you're still going to be using the same foot. You're still going to be putting the piping in that second groove from the left. Oh, and I do want to say, um, a lot of machines uh, have available a actual piping foot. And um, the groove, it will probably just have one groove and it will be in the center, and uh, it will also be the perfect size for piping, for this baby piping. But I actually like the um, eight groove pin tuck foot better. Not eight groove, five groove. So now we're gonna sew right on that same stitching line. Get out of the way. 
So now we have our collar and we are going to trim the seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch. But before that, we're going to flip it right side out and just look for any places where you might have stitched too close or too far away from the piping. Sometimes you can get a little pucker in it. So it's always best to do that first and then turn it wrong side out again and trim your seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch. Now you're ready to turn it right side out. After you make your second collar, then take your collars to your ironing board and just carefully press so you get a nice smooth finish around the edge. Okay, the last thing um, I'm going to tell you is a little trick that we often uh, teach our students here at the Children's Corner. And if you will just get a hold of your cording and pull it out about a half an inch, clip it off, then pull so that right at that area where you're going to have a seam, it'll be much flatter, your collar will lay much flatter, and you'll be much more pleased with the result.